Magandang umaga, Pilipinas. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are joining around the world. Welcome to today's webinar where we will try to solve antimicrobial resistance or AMR through One Health approach. Priority actions for best practice policies and surveillance innovations. We are streaming to you live to the Circa Online Learning and Virtual Engagements or SOLVE platform via Zoom and Facebook Live. My name is Jean Labios, and I am a program specialist of the Training for Development Unit under the Education and Collective Learning Department of Circa. I will be your moderator for this morning's webinar. The short video shown earlier has given you a glimpse about Circa and what we do. Circa is hosted by the Philippine government in the campus of the University of the Philippines Los Baños, so we are coming to you live from Los Baños, Laguna, the special science and nature city of the Philippines. This solved webinar is Circa's immediate response to the emerging impacts of the COVID-19 global pandemic on food security. By maximizing the use of information and communication technology platforms to include, inform, educate, and share evidence-based solutions and tested technologies, as well as best practices on the ground. If you are new to this webinar, this is actually the 24th webinar since it was launched last April 28, 2020. In this webinar today, we will be joined by experts who will share their experiences and insights on strengthening surveillance of antimicrobial resistance or AMR in Southeast Asia. CIRCA's 11th five-year plan, which was launched in July 2020, identifies eco-health, one health applications to agriculture and rural development as one of the priority areas that would accelerate transformation through agricultural innovation. Before we proceed to our online conversation this morning, please allow me to quickly go over some st statistics gathered from the SOLVE webinar held on February 17, 2021. The infograph shows that 76 of our online viewers were female and the rest were male. It also indicates that there were about 100 individuals tuned in via Zoom, while almost 400 viewed the webinar through Circa's Facebook page. Lastly, we are happy to note that we've had at the online attendees not only from the Philippines, but also from Cambodia, Indonesia, Lao PDR, Malaysia, Thailand, Timor-Leste, and Vietnam. Let me now quickly go over the program flow, which is currently shown on your screen. After my introduction and few housekeeping rules, we will have our first speaker, Dr. Abby Stephanie Uy, Veterinarian 2 of the National Veterinary Quarantine Services Division, Bureau of Animal Industry, Philippine Department of Agriculture, or DABAI. Dr. Uy will discuss the Philippine government's AMR initiatives in the animal health sector. Representing Dr. Augusto Santo today is Dr. Susan Yuris Mono, Senior Researcher at the Indian Center for Veterinary Research and Development, Agency for Agriculture, Rural Research and Development, Indonesian Ministry of Agriculture. She will be representing the Indonesian perspective of handling, monitoring, and surveillance to reduce the effects of AMR. Our final presenter is Dr. Flavie Luce Boutard research epidemiologist at the French Agricultural Research Center for International Development, or CIRAD. She will be discussing the knowledge and awareness actions for AMR policy intervention in Southeast Asia. I know you're all excited to listen to our speakers, but let me first encourage you to send us your questions. How do you do this? For those of you who are tuned in via Circus Facebook page, you may type your questions in the comments section. Kindly indicate your location now and or country of origin. If you're tuned in via Zoom, please post your questions or comments in the Q&A box, which you will find in the menu bar on your screen. Kindly indicate your location and or country of origin as well. Our SOLVE team will collate, curate, and compile those questions for me, and I will convey them to our speakers. Hopefully, we will be able to cover as many questions as we can in the time remaining. Please be clear when you're posing a question to a specific presenter or if it is a general question that anybody can respond to. We will do our best to get as many questions as possible during the open forum. 
Please note that this webinar will be recorded and will be made available on Circus Facebook page and YouTube channel. Today's presentation will be uploaded on Circus website at www.circa.org. The slides shown during the past webinars have already been posted there. For your social media posts, especially on insights or key takeaways from this webinar, please use the hashtag CircaSol. If you have issues or are experiencing technical difficulties with the Zoom online platform, please contact us at solve at circa.org. Moving on to today's presentations, our first speaker is Dr. Abby Stephanie Uy, Veterinarian II of the National Veterinary Quarantine Services Division of the ABAI. Prior to her current stint, she served as Science Research Assistant for the Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standards. She was also a farm veterinarian and superintendent for Nest Farms Incorporated. Dr. Uy holds a doctorate in veterinary medicine from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and a master's in veterinary studies, veterinary pub public health from the Massey University of New Zealand. Here to present the Philippine government's updates on the AMR program in the animal health sector, please welcome Dr. Abby Stephanie Uy. We are having some technical difficulties at the moment, so let us first uh, push, uh, uh, move forward to our event and have Dr. Susan Noor to present first. Thank you, uh, Jen, uh, for your uh, coming to my presentation. Uh, it is great to see you all. <clears throat> Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Susan M. Noor, actually. I'm from Indonesia. And today, I'm going to deliver a presentation on behalf of our director of Indonesian Center Agriculture Research and Development, Dr. Aku Sunanto. We apologize that our director uh, could not attend in this webinar today, since he has an urgent meeting uh, with our Minister of Agriculture this morning. Uh, my topic of presentation uh, is about Indonesian perspective of handling monitoring uh, surveillance to reduce the effect of AMR, focusing on AMR surveillance in animal sector. This is our outline. Uh, we will talk uh, uh, divided uh, several sections, a little bit about introduction, and then about, uh, next I will say on IMR in Indonesia and continue with a national action plan that we have already established. Next. And then uh, surveillance and monitoring and barriers uh, to effective surveillance. And then the last is uh, the conclusion. So, let me start it with the introduction. I will uh, talk a little bit uh, about AMR in Indonesia. If you know, Indonesia is uh, ranked fourth in terms of uh, total population in the world, and with an estimated uh, population uh, around 258 million. And Indonesia also uh, comprises of a uh, thousand of islands, therefore uh, representing uh, a complex uh, geographic terrain as well. Given uh, this setting, it is expected that the problem of AMR uh, would emerge uh, because of uh, complex interaction between multi-sectoral surfaces. So, uh, for the antimicrobial uh, usage in Indonesia, especially in animal husbandry for therapy, for therapy supportive or prevention, in Indonesia lead to an uh, increase of AFM bacteria. Uh, says, uh, result from the regional resistant uh, surveillance program conducted in 12 ASEAN countries indicated that Indonesian's burden of AMR could be higher than anticipated through local studies, such as uh, the extended uh, ESPL among hospitalized patients uh, who was most prevalent in Indonesia, and also upon uh, the bacterial pattern data in several hospitals in Indonesia, also from the uh, methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. Uh, therefore, to prevent uh, increasing uh, losses and slowdown to this AMR in Indonesia, our government uh, already have a strategic step uh, in the animal health sector, especially in other uh, related sector, to implement the global action uh, plan priority on AMR. And we know that uh, the surveillance is one of the five strategic objectives of the global action plan because the atmosphere is uh, 
to be part of the quality indicator in antivirus uh, stewardship uh, program. And this is a uh, status of uh, controlling IMR in Indonesia. Currently, Indonesia already has a national action plan uh, 2017 and 2019, uh, which is the result of joint thought and concept for multi sector. And the next, we already have a draft for the national action plan on antimicrobial resistance uh, 2020 and 2024. And there is uh, there are uh, stra five strategic objectives, uh, but uh, here and I will presenting the strengthening uh, knowledge and database uh, through surveillance and and research to combat uh, IMR uh, in Indonesia. Our government also have a policy uh, for controlling IMR, uh, like uh, minister institution have made uh, various achievement uh, in controlling IMR among others by issuing a constitution. Uh, for example, like Constitution Number 18, 2009, uh, by livestock and animal health, and there is a uh, several article that mention uh, uh, for pre prohibition of using a uh, feed mix uh, with certain hormone or feed additive antibiotic, and also we have already classified the veterinary drug uh, based on the level of the danger, and prohibition using a uh, certain veterinary uh, drugs on livestock with product for human consumption. This is a regulation by uh, ministerial uh, regulation. That means by this policy, uh, the IMR control Indonesia is very uh, strong and supported, fully supported by the government. The other uh, regulation is from Minister of Agriculture number 14 in 2014 about uh, prohibition uh, using antibiotic as a crude promoter in livestock and the, the new uh, uh, presidential instruction is number 4, 2009. Uh, in that uh, instruction, there is a regulation regarding the control of uh, antimicrobial resistance. So uh, let me uh, discuss uh, the surveillance and research uh, on AMR this already assessment. For surveillance on AMR in Indonesia has set up a national surveillance system for antimicrobial resistance interministerial steering committee. Uh, that means we, we have already uh, worked together with other uh, ministers like uh, Minister of uh, Health, Minister of Min uh, Marine and Fishery. And also we have already developed a national guidelines uh, for IML uh, surveillance based on ATLAS, EGISAR, OIA, and CODEX. And we have planning a national uh, survey on human livestock, uh, livestock uh, fish and food animal origin. And also, sorry, I can see that. Okay, and also we have already uh, uh, built a laboratory capacity under the total position of national referral laboratory. So we have already established national laboratory references in each sector, actually. Uh, this is the scheme of IMR surveillance system uh, involving animal sector in Indonesia. Uh, and it, uh, from the monitoring and surveillance uh, IMR, also AMU and the material uh, usage. Uh, in animal sector, uh, we monitor and uh, doing uh, surveillance uh, in bacterial pathogen from terrestrial animal, and also we do AMR uh, and uh, MU residue in animal uh, setting. And for the system surveillance, here uh, we monitor and surveillance the bacteria from healthy food uh, and, anim and animal products here. In it. And then for the antibiotic usage uh, and consumption, also we do in animals. This is uh, that we do uh, surveillance in Indonesia. So our uh, this is uh, the milestone in the last five years of historical uh, event. As we mentioned here, starting for 2016 till 2009, there are several achievements that already obtained, like. Uh, Firstly, uh, we identify first upon the need of the assessment. And then in 2017, we have already implemented the pilot surveillance of uh, antimicrobial usage in three provinces in Indonesia. And also the pilot surveillance for antimicrobial resistance in three provinces and focus on broader sector at the time. And then in the 2018, uh, we have already developed the guideline and national initial implementation of uh, AMR surveillance. This is conducted by eight uh, disease intervention center in Indonesia and surrounding in Indonesia. Uh, and then in 2018 and 2009, we developing a clinical surveillance system, but on layers. 
Okay, uh, so uh, about our concept of the IMR surveillance, uh, from the IMR, we uh, did uh, surveillance IMR in live animals and also animal product. In the live animals, uh, we uh, take a sample from farm and also slaughterhouses level. And then for the animal product, we uh, take sample from the food chain and also we try to do monitoring of the residue. Uh, uh, and the bacteria that we focusing here is uh, two bacteria, Salmonella and E. coli, because Salmonella is uh, referred to zoonotic agent, and the other is E. coli is as indicator uh, microorganism. And for the concept of antimicrobial usage surveillance in Indonesia, uh, we use a uh, data aggregation from uh, reporting uh, importers and producer, and also using uh, data disaggregation uh, data from uh, clinical use uh, like uh, Isignas. Isignas is this is uh, the data is a uh, real time data that coming from uh, surrounding Indonesia to uh, the center. Uh, government, yeah, uh, and then we also using a uh, report by veterinary service officer in district level and also fit uh, monitoring. Uh, and then to support uh, the program, here's the capacity development for AMR and MU surveillance, and that we have it already uh, achieved. Uh, starting for 2017 2018, we have already do AMU and also AMR and three provinces in Indonesia. And we have sharing experience uh, about the AMU and AMR activities with other uh, ministries like uh, Minister Marine Affairs and Fishery. And we do surveillance, uh, recycle surveillance, I mean, so human, animal, and um, environment uh, together. And we did a training for IFM surveillance uh, pilot project yeah, in the 10 uh, government laboratories. And also uh, training for laboratory capacity we do in Chualangkorn University in Thailand uh, uh, and FIO, and also uh, IMR surveillance. For 2018 18 and 2019, we have already disseminated the survey result of IMU and three provinces in Indonesia, uh, uh, Central Java, West Kalimantan, and Lampung, and also the IMR uh, surveillance study in. Uh, uh, this is interested education center and Subang. And we have already established a, like a consortium of IMR and MU researcher in the field of animal husbandry and animal health. And we harmonize the uh, MU and MR activities among the director general of uh, animal health, FAO, and also Netherlands program. And we do zoonosis testing sampling guidance and also technical guidance for veterinary medicine. Now in 2020, uh, actually we already have the workshop on monitoring the quantity of pattern of antimicrobial usage in animal that was already uh, done uh, last uh, 11 and 12 of February 2020. And then uh, not all of the program actually to uh, combat the AMR in Indonesia, we have done very uh, successfully, but uh, here there is a barrier to effective surveillance actually for AMR and MMU because uh, on the international guideline uh, surveillance AMR and MU in some sector like plants, food processing, environment is very few. And this is not, not clinical data individually uh, we, we got it. And also no surveillance system in general community population. And there is still no connection between consumption data uh, in AMU and the real usage and also resistant pattern or AMR. And there is a variation on the technical uh, approach and that we know uh, because Indonesia is very uh, a big uh, country and this is really difficult to uh, uh, work uh, in uh, together in when uh, uh, to get uh, outreach uh, to uh, combat the IMR. Next, there are measures to develop the program effectively. Uh, so in the National Action Plan IMR for 2022 and 2025, we have already drafted uh, uh, and it be, uh, with the vision is to uh, the realization of healthy Indonesian and free from the impact of antimicrobial resistance through the One Health approach uh, that's uh, uh, here by increasing uh, knowledge and scientific evidence through surveillance and research. Uh, we uh, try to obtain the data information on the AMR and anti-MU uh, and also we prepare uh, to get like a uh, 
technical guidelines and interaction and also increasing from the human resources and supporting the National Reform Laboratory uh, with quality is guaranteed and also an early warning system about the problem of uh, AMR in Indonesia. From the, my presentation, I can uh, conclude it that uh, in Indonesia, for use and men of entrepreneur, again, in animal and uh, human, this is still accelerated the emergence of uh, AMR genetically. And the National Action Plan combating AMR in Indonesia is already established uh, in place. And from the surveillance uh, and monitoring AMR and MU to minimize the emergence on spread of AMR, it requires the coordination and then uh, focus multi-sectoral and also multinational effort. Last but not least, uh, in the next uh, program, uh, we try to support, uh, to intensify collaboration among Southeast Asian countries to implement the IMR and also we provide the uh, government providing healthy food for human beings on IMR for uh, safety uh, environment. And also from the research, we explore uh, local ingredients as an alternative uh, food promoter. Uh, acknowledgement actually from the surveillance and monitoring uh, in animal sector is uh, Authority by Directorate of Veterinary Public Health, Director General Livestock and Animal Health, Minister of Agriculture. So all of the data here is come from that uh, uh, Directorate of Veterinary Public Health. In, and also we acknowledge uh, using uh, some of uh, the OIKE uh, strategy on antimicrobial resistance, uh, the use of uh, antimicrobial 2016. So thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you, Dr. Susan, for sharing with us the Indonesian National Action Plan on AMR. We know that one of the most important aspects of monitoring and surveillance is strengthening knowledge and database to be able to make evidence-based policies to reduce both AMU and AMR. We now have Dr. Abby Uy again. She will, represent, she will present the Philippine government's updates on the AMR program in the animal health sector. Dr. Uy, the screen is yours. Uh, good day, everyone. So this is the updates on the antimicrobial resistance program of the Philippine government on uh, from the animal health sector. So just to provide a quick context on the on the importance of this uh, initiative. So uh, there, there, by 2050, it's projected that there will be an additional 1 billion people. And with that rise in population, mostly coming from developing countries. So with that rise of uh, population, it also means a, a rise in uh, food consumption. And the past trend shows that uh, trending on um, animal uh, meat consumption. So this is the pathway showing uh, the drivers of antimicrobial resistance. So it can be very clearly seen that uh, it is complex and multisectoral, and therefore it requires a multisectoral approach as well. So on 2014, the Philippine government, um, by uh, the signing of President uh, Manoy Aquino, created the Interagency Committee uh, for the formulation, development, and implementation of the National Action Plan to combat antimicrobial resistance in the Philippines. So the Interagency Committee is chaired, uh, is co-chaired by both the Department of Health and the Department of Agriculture and has for its members, the Department of Interior Local Government, Department of Science and Technology, and the Department of Trade and Industry. And then we are also trying to tap in the Department of Environmental and Natural Resources. But on 2014, the Interagency Committee was formed. On 2015, the first the Philippine Action Plan was launched. And then on 2019, the second version of the Philippine Action Plan uh, was launched. So these are quickly the key strategies outlined in the Philippine National Action Plans. So the first strategy is to combat, um, is to combat AMR through a multi-sectoral engagement. Um, second is to strengthen surveillance and laboratory capacity. Third is to ensure un uninter uninterrupted access to safe and quality assured antimicrobials. Fourth is to regulate and promote the rational use of antimicrobials. Fifth, to reduce incidence of infection through sanitation hygiene uh, and control. 
Six is to promote innovation and research. And seven is to improve awareness and understanding of what is AMR through effective communication and education. So those uh, points that are bold are the initiatives uh, that the annual sector has focused on. So very quickly, these are the summarize um, highlights and milestones uh, of the AMR policy on the animal sector. So from the from 2014, where it was the where, where, where in the agency interagency committee was uh, created, and then 2015 the launching of the uh, Philippine Action Plan. So in 2016 there was a pilot project, uh, pilot surveillance project uh, for regions three and four A, which are the top uh, producing regions for swine and poultry in the Philippines. And then 2017, there was a FAO AMR project to develop to base to use the results of the pilot surveillance and to come up with a antimicrobial resistance surveillance plan for animal health, which was launched in 2018. And the same year as well, the DA initiated the, AM, the I am responsible campaign. Uh, more on that later. Um, and then 2019, um, the second Philippine National Action Plan was launched. Um, on 2020, administrative order for the DOH and the DOA regarding the regulation of vet drugs was updated. So for the first uh, key strategy, number uh, sorry, second key strategy, which is to strengthen the laboratory uh, capacity in surveillance. Um, so this is um, the figure that shows um, what are the surveillance uh, plans in the animal health sector. So there's one from the uh, focusing on the pathogens from disease animals, um, focusing on pathogens from aquatic animals, then focusing on pathogens from uh, food at, from healthy animals intended for food consumption. The implement implementers of the components of the different components are all also separated into the different agencies under the Department of Agriculture. So, for example, for component one, which is focused on the, uh, which is uh, surveilling um, pathogens from healthy food animals intended for human consumption, that would be the National Meat Inspection Service. For component two, which is um, uh, focusing on pathogens from deceased livestock, um, the, the Bureau of Animal Industry, in connection with the uh, regional field offices of the Department of Agriculture and the regional uh, animal disease diagnostic laboratories uh, will be uh, implementing uh, for swine and poultry. Well, for ruminants, uh, dairy, dairy animals, it will be the National Dairy Authority as well as the Philippine Carabao Center. And lastly, for the third component on aquaculture and fisheries, the implementing agency is the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. So the main objectives for the animal resistance surveillance plan uh, sorry, antimicrobial resistance surveillance plan for animal health. The main objective is to provide evidence-based policy recommendation for antimicrobial usage in food animals, as well as develop clinical guidelines uh, for veterinarians for the, on the proper use of antimicrobials in both livestock and fisheries. So these are the target samples for for talk for component one, which is on healthy animals for food. Um, we focus on swine and poultry, which is the two most um, consumed uh, animal protein uh, in the Philippines. So the target bacteria is Salmonella, Campylo, S, uh, E. coli, Enterococcus, and Enterococcus fecalis. Um, th these uh, are taken from the slaughterhouses and dressing plants. Then component two is a passive surveillance. Um, also, again, on uh, swine and poultry, but this time swine and poultry with respiratory illness. So these uh, are the uh, usual pathogens seen in um, swine and poultry with respiratory illness. And then for dairy animals, we're focused on those with clinical and subclinical mastitis. And then for component three, for fisheries and aquatic, uh, we focus on the tilapia, milkfish, and shrimp, which are usually the, those uh, cultured for food use. Um, and these are the common uh, uh, pathogens seen from them. Uh, along the way, there's been a lot of challenges. Um, the animal, uh, the ARSP uh, animal health uh, plan was, devel was developed in 2018 and was supposed to uh, 
uh, implemented from 2019 to 2020. However, along the way, um, first ASF, uh, there was an ASF outbreak in the country, and then 2020, um, COVID hit. So there, it posed a lot of challenges on the implementation of the plan. That was why on 2020, uh, the ARSP was reviewed and it was decided to extend until 2023. So um, uh, along with the challenges of uh, the outbreaks that we face, we also change, uh, we also had challenges with the logistical um, cooperation. So for example, for um, for the component one under National Meat Inspection Service, the surveillance on um, meat coming from healthy animals, uh, it was already in place. However, for component uh, components two and three under the under BAI and under BFAR, uh, it, it required uh, setting up the um, linkages um, among different offices. For BAI, uh, it they had to um, interact with, uh, they had to link with the regional field offices of the Department of Agriculture along with the labs and train, and then train the regional laboratory personnel on both the collection sampling and on the initial laboratory isolation. Okay, for the, the results of the ARSP, um, the results for the surveillance is still being, uh, the, the report for that is still being written, um, but uh, at least there will be an uh, extension of the plan until 2023. So the next key strategy under the Philippine National Action Plan is to regulate, promote the use of antimicrobials. So um, there's been a desk review on the existing regulatory framework, as well as different workshops uh, on the antimicrobial use in animals. Key strategy number five is to reduce incidence of infection. So it, when you reduce incidence of infection, you also reduce uh, antimicrobial use. So we are targeting that through the promotion of the Good Animal Husbandry Practices Program under the Bureau of Animal Industry. So the Good Animal Husbandry Practices Program, it promotes um, the uh, recommended minimum sanitary guidelines on the production of animals so that it will, one, reduce disease uh, development. And then if there are disease on how to prudently use antimicrobials, as well as how to manage the farm waste so that uh, there will be less environmental impact. Key strategy number six is to promote uh, in innovation research with, um, with academe in other uh, organizations. So on November, uh, on November during the World Antimicrobial Awareness Week celebration, we had a lecture series uh, with the different um, with the different academic sectors on on eight possible AMR researches, and they also submitted some research proposals. And then, so key strategy number seven is to improve awareness and understanding. Uh, of the AMR resistance through communication and education. So this is where the I am responsible campaign comes in. It's targeted to stakeholders such as the uh, veterinary practitioners, farms, the pharmaceutical companies, and those that sell pharma uh, veterinary pharmaceuticals, as well as to, L to the local government offices in the field. So uh, this is the IMR um, uh, come, uh, mat brochure or materials that we sent out. Um, it's both in, written in English and in the local uh, local dialects. So it has a wider, it'll be able to reach a wider audience. And then uh, we also have a Facebook page for the AMR, for the I Am Responsible campaign. And then uh, conducting online lecture series and uh, joining the World Animal and the Microbial Awareness Week celebration. Um, right after that, we had the Philippine Antique Microbial Awareness Week. And uh, collaborating with uh, veterinary colleges and universities. And so for 2021, um, we have, a, we have an ongoing knowledge, attitude, and practices survey on AMR and AMU in collaboration with uh, four veterinary universities. And then we also plan to, up, to develop the national 
uh, veterinary drug residue uh, monitoring framework um, that's currently uh, that's uh, there's already a draft available so we're just uh, waiting on the final stages on, on that and then uh, again the extension of the uh, animal antimicrobial surveillance plan in the animal health sector up to the year 2023 and then we also plan to uh, update the Philippine National Veterinary Drug Formulary so that gives a uh, recommendations on which antimicrobials are suited for which disease. And then uh, again, the tooling and training of the animal disease uh, uh, surveillance personnel. So those would be those that uh, do the sample collection as well as those that do the um, bacterial isolation in the lab. So that is it for the uh, Philippine government's initiatives on AMR. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uy, for providing us with updates on AMR in the Philippine animal sector. We know the Philippine action plan to combat AMR through a One Health approach, and it was interesting to learn about the I Am Responsible campaign, especially its targeted stakeholders that includes grassroots players like farms, LGUs, and field personnel. Again, may I remind our online attendees watching the webinar via Facebook Live, Please start typing your questions in the comments section, including your location or country of origin. If you're tuned in via Zoom, please post your questions in the Q&A box, which you will find in the menu bar on your screen. While waiting for our speaker's final speaker's presentation to be shared on the screen, please allow me to tell you more about her. Dr. Flavia Luz Gutard is a veterinarian specialized in applied epidemiology. He has been working for CIRAD since 2005 within the research unit ASTRE. She also coordinates the CIRAD research platform called GREASE. He has 20 years of experience in the field of infectious diseases, epidemiology in tropical countries, working mainly on the development of adapted surveillance and control strategies for animal diseases in rural settings. She worked as an international, international consultant for the FAO and OIE in the development of a training course on epidemiology. Her recent research focuses on participatory epidemiology, evaluation of surveillance, risk assessment, and on behavior changes like the link to antimicrobial use. She is also an adjunct professor at Kasset Sart University, Thailand, and is coordinating a new master's program in One Health Interface. Without further ado, here is Dr. Guitar. Thank you very much. So thank you um, for inviting me today to talk to the SOLF uh, webinar. And um, so my name is Flavie Guta. I'm a veterinarian epidemiologist. Uh, I'm a researcher at a French institution, uh, CIRAD. I'm actually based in Bangkok, Thailand, where uh, I'm coordinating an international research platform name uh, Grise. And uh, for this talk, I've been asked to talk about knowledge and awareness action for AMR policy intervention in Southeast Asia. And uh, in fact, to do that in my talk, I will uh, show you and use some uh, example methods and tools that uh, we have implemented uh, in our Grise network with our uh, several partners in Southeast Asia. Um, showing some example of projects that we are doing. Okay, um, sorry. First, um, as it's been mentioned uh, several times uh, this morning, um, uh, in most countries, context-specific national action plan have been designed under the tripartite alliance, if you are WHO, with a focus on one else approach. However, to be efficient, this national action plan requires an effective governance which refers to how health policies and collective action are made, understood, accepted, and implemented by the different actors of the antibiotic supply chains and by the primary users of antibiotics. So uh, working uh, on, on and with all these actors is essential in the process of changing the use of antibiotics. Um, this is what, in fact, we are trying to do with our partner with the Greece Network. Our focus are the actors involved in the production, the selling, and the use of antibiotics, especially targeting small and medium livestock producers. Uh, we are trying to answer a series of questions such as, uh, what are the practice, belief, opinion regarding antibiotic use? 
What are the barriers and motivation of the actor to change in practice? What are the levers to be activated to enable a, a reduction in the use of antibiotics? What are the factors influencing the decision process towards, towards the change? And um, how uh, can we co-develop or co-implement new strategy or innovation in order to change uh, the usage of uh, antibiotics? I'm going to show some examples of methods, tools, and uh, projects that uh, are implementing to answer, that we are implementing to answer this question with our partners. So uh, first about practices, so uh, well-known uh, tools, which is uh, CAP survey. So that was implemented in Laos and Cambodia. And uh, in fact, um, CAP, Knowledge Attitude Practice, um, is a good tool uh, in order to identify source of misconception or misunderstanding that may represent potential barrier to behavior change. So that can be uh, done at different level for different type of stakeholders, like farmers, semi-commercial, commercial or backyard, but as well vet officer or drug sellers. When it comes to beliefs and opinion, um, we are using more participatory approach um, by using like um, on this example, uh, a Q uh, methodology uh, that was done in Thailand and in Madagascar. Um, it's a semi-qualitative method that studies the subjectivity of individual regarding a complex and sensitive subject. The main objective is to identify a group of individuals sharing the same point of view and uh, to determine commune and distinguished opinion on the same subject. And the idea um, is uh, to be able to design a specific and targeted uh, innovation or strategy or communication uh, process targeting a specific group of people. Uh, as said uh, earlier, many countries are trying to implement new health policy under the National Action Plan. And so we are as well working uh, to understand what are the relationship and the posture of the different actors of the antibiotic supply chain uh, or uh, involved in the, for example, in the antimicrobial resistance surveillance network when these actors are facing new regulation. For that, uh, we are uh, using implementing another type of tool, uh, which is coming from social sciences. It's stakeholder mapping analysis. It's a process of systematically gathering and analyzing qualitative information to determine whose interests should be taken into account when developing or implementing a policy, a policy or a program. The, uh, in the analysis, uh, we include um, and we look for specific stakeholder characteristics, such as how much do they know about the policy uh, that are going to, uh, to be implemented? What are their interests related to the policy? What are their positions? Are they for or against the policy? What could be the potential alliance with other stakeholders? And what are their ability to affect in a positive or in a negative way the policy process through a position of power or leadership? So, uh, one of the objectives um, of this uh, method and tool is to identify the relevance of each actor in the change process and to determine the objectives they are pursuing, whether they do it in a more or less open and transparent manner. So an example, it's uh, in Laos, we did that for the um, uh, drug supplier chain, uh, looking at uh, all uh, all the, the, the stakeholders. So this scheme is uh, showing the flow of formal and uh, informal uh, antibiotic between the different uh, stakeholders, identifying key actors to target when the policy will change. Because it's uh, the case like in many countries now, the plan is to uh, change uh, from uh, compulsory prescription for, uh, for people who want to buy antibiotic. So um, the idea is really to identify what are the key actors and uh, what are as well uh, informal and uh, formal pathway uh, of using antibiotics. Another example uh, is um, this uh, scheme with um, presenting the organizational and functional mapping of the main stakeholders of the antimicrobial resistance surveillance strategy in Vietnam. Um, and in fact, uh, you can show, it can show in this map all the stakeholders involved in the surveillance network and identifying, so this is through uh, an interview, focus group, uh, 
an interactive way of uh, collecting qualitative data to uh, represent who is actively participating in the strategy, who is influencing the most the strategy, and who are absent uh, and should maybe be more involved to have a successful strategies. So that are uh, full, uh, some uh, related um, example, and uh, I, I wanted as well to um, to show uh, you one project that is uh, under uh, uh, activity at the moment. So it's a H2020 project uh, roadmap uh, for rethinking of antimicrobial decision system in the management of animal production. Um, the idea, this uh, project is mainly uh, driven by the social scientists in Europe, but we have case study in Mozambique and in Vietnam. And uh, the idea is really to co-develop innovative strategy uh, and to uh, engage all the actors uh, of the animal and drug production change to encourage the rational use of antimicrobial. Uh, for that, uh, so in Vietnam, we, uh, we work uh, with different partners and uh, we have a PhD student, Chloe uh, Batty. Uh, she's um, in fact uh, working uh, with the different stakeholders and uh, one of her first work, in fact, in Vietnam, we are working on poultry farms, uh, many, and uh, one of her first work was to um, identify the different strategy in Vietnam to reduce uh, the usage of uh, antibiotics. So um, she identified six strategies linked uh, to um, husbandry practices. Uh, so with uh, implementation of uh, label training and so, um, the development of alternative products, um, the development of um, uh, some products with antibiotic residue frees, um, the development of an organic production system, awareness on antimicrobial resistance and a change in regulation. And for this, all, all the strategy, she, uh, through stakeholders uh, interview, she, um, she identify barriers and incentives that could be uh, useful uh, to improve the implementation of all this strategy. And uh, to, um, to do that, the idea is to use two uh, methods, two tools, so one uh, is um, uh, to, um, to use um, a collaborative method, which is uh, called companion, companion modeling. Companion modeling is um, a way to shift from individual representation of a system to a shared representation and a common representation of the system. So the idea is when you have an issue, like uh, you would like to um, uh, understand uh, and to change uh, the way people are using uh, antibiotics. The idea is to uh, gather all the stakeholders um, to have a first co-construction of a common understanding uh, of the system uh, using different methods and tools, but in a participatory, participatory way and iterative way in order to, um, during this uh, different workshop and uh, and uh, approach to uh, agree and propose future improvements and to uh, be uh, able to agree on uh, what is our desirable future. Uh, so what do we need to change? What need to change? How? Who need to change? How? how and how is that it's sustainable? So I, the idea in, uh, for Vietnam is to uh, use this uh, method. So um, the idea is to model the system to propose change, to change the model uh, implementing the change, and to re-discuss uh, again with the different stakeholders what have changed and what the consequences of the, ch of the change, and is it uh, sustainable or not. The, the, the objective in Vietnam is so to set up uh, this type of platform and adopt technical working group to be able to discuss and to implement some intervention at local level to reduce aim. Another um, tool and method uh, that we would like to uh, uh, implement as well, it's role-playing games. Um, and in a, in a way of uh, using game educational contributions, so it's really to, to, to construct, to build some, uh, some, some real game. So that uh, has been done already for rabies, for example, um, uh, for uh, disease transmitted by bats uh, like Japanese encephalitis in Cambodia. 
And at the moment, uh, there is uh, some of my colleagues that are working on the development of such a role-playing game for um, Ebola uh, in, uh, in uh, Central Africa. So the idea of constructing this game, it's again like the, uh, the commode approach uh, to um, put people together, um, to have um, for people a learning support for acquiring new knowledge, but uh, doing that uh, with pleasure and motivation. Uh, at the same time that people are playing, uh, initiate some behavior change in the play, uh, players and some problem solving initiative. And the fact to, to role play uh, help people to apprehend the diversity of the different stakeholders involved in the uh, drug uh, supply chain or in the surveillance of uh, antimicrobial resistance and to understand uh, who is doing what uh, in their field of, of action and so to better understand the complexity of IMR. So um, that's it's all for, for my contribution for today. So these are uh, really uh, uh, about, yes, method and tools that can be uh, useful to uh, better uh, understand uh, barriers and incentives to implement uh, new legislation and regulation in, uh, in the framework of antimicrobial resistance uh, fight. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge all my uh, colleagues um, that, uh, in fact, contributed to my presentation by their work. So, uh, colleagues from the Greece uh, platform. Uh, so, I have colleagues from uh, uh, Laos, uh, Thailand, um, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Philippines, because Philippines is, is part of the Greece network. Uh, and uh, again, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goudard, for sharing with us your insights on AMR policy interventions in Southeast Asia. We note that in order to propose effective strategies to reduce antibio antibiotic use, it is necessary to adapt them to the farming methods and socioeconomic context of each country. Successful implementation of national action plans requires effective governance that relates to the ways in which decisions are made and implemented. With that, let us move on to the open forum. The first question is directed to both Dr. Abby Uy and Dr. Susan Yurismona. And the question is, was there any particular challenge you have encountered in, res in your respective government's campaigns? For example, in involving stakeholders, was there any resistance that you have come across and how did you overcome this? Let's start with Dr. Abby. So for the stakeholders part, so uh, as you can see, there were a lot of different stakeholders. So for the uh, field, for the veterinarians and the clinical practitioners, the uptake is quite good. Um, the same goes for the um, for those the, the government offices that we uh, partner with. However, uh, for the farm. With regard to the pharmaceuticals and those that sell um, veterinary pharmaceuticals, um, so far, because there's been um, a gray area on the regulation about that, um, the government is still trying to work out between DOH and DA about the regulation. So um, by this year, there will be a new set. So um, there will probably be a better um, uh, data after this year. Thank you, Dr. Abby. So we look forward to having these regulations uh, implemented and set for the Philippines. Uh, Dr. Susan, you're up next. Uh, thank you, Harima uh, Dajin. Yeah, actually, uh, from the uh, IMA campaigns in Indonesia, we have already uh, done for uh, maybe around in the first time we uh, established the national action plan on IMR uh, by uh, like a, a photo selfie and then give like a studium generally in university and also give uh, like from the stakeholders usually we work, uh, uh, have like a, a seminar workshop with uh, like a drug association and veterinary and the veterinary uh, drug association uh, just to uh, yeah just uh, give awareness that uh, we have to uh, decrease uh, using like antibiotics uh, especially in uh, feed uh, as a feed additive or maybe as a growth promoter and it looks like uh, there is a, a, a good result uh, for the decreasing of using uh, the antibiotic in an in animal sector actually between 2017 and 2018 and, and it's uh, yeah maybe, even though it's not quite, but there is also in 2018, there is no growth promoter uh, use uh, in, in the 
uh, fit um, animals. And uh, yeah, from the challenge is maybe uh, like Indonesia is uh, too broad, yeah, <laughs> that many islands. So that means it's really difficult just to uh, do like a surveillance in comprehensive surveillance, I mean, yeah. Uh, but uh, we still uh, have uh, like a uh, uh, good uh, condition, like we still have like a disease investigation center uh, surrounding Indonesia. We have eight uh, DIC in Indonesia. So uh, all of the DIC uh, can do. Uh, 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 like monitoring uh, surveillance and it already have to be uh, reported every year yeah uh, and also we have like uh, exignas uh, to report like the real time data from uh, like from the farm or for, uh, from the cases of uh, any uh, disease in indonesia thank you dr susan so we know that since as you said, Indonesia is a very huge island. Yeah. <laughs> the campaign is still ongoing. And it's pretty much the same in the Philippines, I would say, right, Dr. Abby? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, the next question is for, for Dr. Flavi Gutard. You mentioned that behavior change is crucial in the process of producing antimicrobial use. In your experience, what are the most common barriers to behavioral change? What is the common form of persistence, especially from stakeholders? Thank you very much for your, your question. Uh, oh, there is several. Um, in fact, um, uh, what we do, we work mainly on small uh, holders and medium uh, holders. Um, so, uh, in fact, um, it's um, when you talk about uh, behavior change and related to the usage of uh, antibiotics, um, the fact is that um, there is several challenges and miss. Uh, conception or misunderstanding of uh, what people um, could do uh, to change and how and the benefits for them to change. In fact, it's really related to the benefits for them to change and for antimicrobial resistance and usage of antibiotics. Uh, for the moment, for some type of stakeholders, they don't see an immediate benefit of uh, their uh, changing process. So uh, it's, uh, it's always a delay where uh, you start to change and you see a benefit. So people that are trying to, um, to help in this change need to think about how this could be beneficial for the small older and, uh, and medium uh, older, uh, trying to um, um, not change only uh, the usage of antibiotics, but something different in, at the farm level, so including biosecurity, uh, access to market. Uh, so, um, and the fact as well that some change can be negative, have a negative impact for small holders, like in some area in uh, mainland uh, Southeast Asia, like in Laos, or in Myanmar, or in uh, Cambodia, in remote area. People, the only um, option is to buy antibiotics to be able to protect the animals. So if they cannot buy antibiotics, uh, if they are, uh, yes, because of restriction, new regulation, uh, people will suffer with uh, loss in their production. So, um, so I, I can't give you, I mean, I... Uh, Yes, the main uh, the main um, uh, barrier it's uh, it's that the people have the feeling that it's not beneficial for them, and we need to work with the different stakeholders on how a change of behavior can be really beneficial and uh, of all the stakeholders, in fact, and uh, trying to identify uh, what's what are their own benefits to to change or not. And uh, so yes, it's it's this. And, and most of the time, it's a true feeling that people feel, feel that it's not beneficial. It's a, it's a real feeling, and it's not just uh, uh, an opinion on a belief. It's really that uh, because options that are proposed to them sometimes are not are beneficial for only a small part of the stakeholders and not on the most vulnerable ones, for example. Uh, so, yes. Okay, thank, thank you, Dr. Flavi. So from your explanation, I know that apart from uh, the need for information to understand the benefits of AMR and uh, risk reducing the use of AMU, um, it, there's also the access that's needed from, especially from the remote area. So I guess that's a challenge that we need to continuously work on today. Yes. Okay, our next question is for all three speakers. Um, it says, one health approach brings together 
different core values by looking at humans, animals, and the ecosystem in order to improve collaboration and transdisciplinary to achieve optimal health. In what specific ways can this approach help us to contain antimicrobial resistance and what should be our role in it? Uh, well, yes, the One Health approach is integral to combating AMR, especially uh, speaking as a regulator. Um, when we try to, uh, for example, when you, for the good animal husbandry practices, uh, you try to regulate, you, you have to consider um, the impact on um, how the how the husbandry practice will impact on the food it will eventually become, and then also on the uh, environment. Uh, so look at the wastewater management and, and other such things. Um, so um, the regulate on the regulate regulation side, uh, one health is definitely um, a very important issue. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, integration of, of all aspects, uh, especially uh, when, it comes, when it comes to regulation. Thank you, Dr. Abby. Uh, who would like to go next? Dr. Flavi? Uh, yes, uh, in fact, um, there is no more, uh, more uh, one else topic than AMR uh, fight, I think. It's a perfect example. Uh, because we know that, in fact, uh, transmission of resistant genes uh, are uh, happening in the different compartments. Usage of antibiotics are ha happening in uh, all the different compart compartments, human, animal, environment. Uh, and so this one s approach is really needed to, uh, to implement uh, some uh, control action. And so at all the different sectors, and as well to uh, assess and to evaluate the efficiency of this uh, control and to look at uh, all the compartments. So implementing surveillance network, one else and collaborative surveillance network is, ne is, is needed, in fact, to be able to measure uh, the efficiency of any control measure in the different compartments. Um, and, um, and this, so that, that it's really uh, needed. And the one else is not only about uh, working at the different compartments, but it's as well to have integration of different science. Uh, as I said, um, uh, to be able to fight AMR and to produce uh, some uh, control uh, that are efficient, we need as well to have, uh, so biologists, veterinarian, medical doctor, but as well to have a view on social scientists, economists, uh, people that are linked with on environment, um, biodiversity, to be able to really target uh, and to understand what's happen uh, happening and how to solve the problem. So it's a one health uh, action between the different compartments, but as well with intersectorial and interdisciplinary approach, which is as well very important. Thank you, Dr. Flavi. So as you said, uh, a one health approach is actually a one health uh, activity that integrates all sciences, not only the hard sciences, but also social scientists, economists, and stuff like that. And that's something that you also highlighted in your presentation. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Susan, you're next. Okay, thank you, uh, Jen. Yeah, actually, like so Indonesia, because in the next uh, national action plan uh, for IML control 2020-2024, we have to like, uh, 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 established like a uh, healthy Indonesian and free from the impact of antimicrobial uh, resistance through the One Health approach. So this means uh, uh, there is uh, several mission we have to uh, uh, achieve, like uh, to increase like awareness and then also the understanding uh, of the resident antimicrobe in uh, society. And also we develop uh, the commitment of all of the uh, stakeholders and also from the decision makers uh, uh, to uh, prevent also to control the uh, resistant um, uh, microbe in every uh, sector. And also we uh, try to next uh, decrease the prevalence of uh, AMR in every sector and uh, develop like innovation uh, for uh, prevention and uh, how to uh, give a good uh, therapy uh, for the infection and alternative uh, uh, like uh, alternative uh, antibiotic and that can be used uh, uh, for to uh, to do uh, to, uh, to in, uh, improve our animal uh, health uh, and also we coordination the collaboration uh, with uh, 
together with like uh, MOA and MOA, like, and then also Minister of uh, Marine and Fishery and also the uh, environment uh, together. Like uh, the, in the last uh, and, uh, national action plan, we have uh, like a three cycle. Uh, collaboration to do uh, surveillance uh, from human, animal, and also in uh, environment. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Susan. So from what you said, I know that it's important to have the commitment, not only yeah. the commitment of the stakeholders, but yeah. as well, but also the coordination between the other ministries such as health, uh, environment, and other concerned sectors. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Susan. You're welcome. Uh, we have a few more questions lined up, but in the interest of time, we will be sending your comments and questions to our speakers for them to answer, and we will share them via email to those who ask the questions. Before we close this webinar, may I request our speakers for some closing or key takeaway messages? Uh, let's start with Dr. Abby. Uh, uh, so, so uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to present the Philippine initiatives and we welcome the, uh, uh, as well as learning from the other speakers. And uh, so if you're interested about the DA IM Responsible Campaign, please do visit our Facebook page. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Dr. Abby. Dr. Susan? Okay, thank you very much uh, to invite uh, us in this uh, webinar. It's really uh, appreciated because we can share what we have already done uh, how to do surveillance and monitoring in antimicrobial resistance and also antimicrobial usage. And actually, just uh, to control uh, antimicrobial, not only we can, uh, uh, the, the responsible is not only in from the minister or uh, in, in uh, all of the stakeholders, maybe uh, we can start it from ourselves yeah, to uh, uh, give like awareness uh, just to uh, how to using uh, antibiotic is very wisely. Thank you. Thank you for what you said. You said, Dr. Susan. Um, Dr. Flavi? Thank you very much. Yes, um, to have inviting me. Uh, sorry for my late uh, show up. Um, I, uh, yes, um, the key message will be. Um, Yes, targeting collaboration between sectors and uh, between disciplines is a key uh, key word. I think if we want uh, to fight uh, this uh, this um, yes uh, threat of EMA, which is just starting, unfortunately, and maybe COVID have been blur on the on the, uh, in the next twenty years, the next big challenge for humanities for everyone. So yes, be be co collaborative and be. Uh, interdisciplinary uh, approach uh, and participatory involving different level. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Flavi. On behalf of CIRCA, led by our director, Dr. Glenn Gregorio, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to Dr. Uy, Dr. Yurismono, and Dr. Guttard for taking the time to join us today. It has been a pleasure to have you with us this morning. That ends our webinar, but before we close, please let us know what you think about this webinar by following the link to a quick feedback form shown on your screen. The same link will direct you to the request form for the e-certificate. Your feedback will help us improve your online, our online learning events. Please note that we will only accommodate requests for e-certificates within 24 hours after the end of this webinar. And we wait for your e-certificate to be issued at least within a month as we receive a lot of requests for e-certificates. Thank you very much for your understanding and patience. Please join us again for our next online conversation on March 10, 2021. We have invited speakers who will discuss agricultural financing for increased, increased productivity and income. Please don't miss it. Let us help one another get through this COVID-19 pandemic. We hope that as we go along, we will be able to create a community of better, bigger, and smarter farmers and farming communities. Once again, this is Jean Labios for Circa. Have a good day, stay healthy, stay safe, and goodbye, everyone. <laughs>